So we're going to talk about the physics of musical instruments. So the first group of musical instruments we're going to talk about is the string family. So string family includes guitars, banjos, violins, anything that has a string is a string instrument. So all of these stringed instruments are based on standing waves. And so in here on the standing wave, you can see we have one loop. In this one loop, we have one, two nodes. Nodes are the areas of no movement, so those are the little dots. Antinodes are areas with greatest amplitude, which are right here. So there is one antinode. So to make sure we understand the difference between these particular vocabulary words, a loop is this entire structure together. The antinode is just the area right in the middle of maximum amplitude. So even though the numbers are the same, they are different conceptually. Then in terms of wavelengths, we're looking at this solid line right here. And the solid line is only a crest. To be a full wavelength, you have to have a crest and a trough. So this is half a wavelength. So the question first is how do you tune or change the pitch in a stringed instrument? So anyone who has done strings or who has a friend who plays string instruments, you know you tune by tightening or loosening. The string. So if you need to make a higher pitch, you tighten it. If you need to make a lower pitch, you loosen it. And so what it does is it not only changes the tension inside of the string itself, but it also slightly changes the length of the string. And so length is what really adjusts that frequency or that pitch that you hear. So then the question is, is how do you change the pitch itself on one string? And so that's where the position along the neck of the stringed instrument, so if we were to go back and look at one, so the neck of the guitar right here, where you put your fingers along the string determines which note you're playing because it's changing the length of the string. And so you change pitches or notes by moving your hand along the neck or a long string. And this changes the length of the string, which then changes the note that you hear. So the next thing we're going to talk about is on a particular string, we're looking at different harmonics. So the first harmonic, so first harmonic means that we have one loop on the string. This one has two loops on the string, so we call this a second harmonic. So you can probably guess that this one, since this one string now has one, two, three, four loops, this will be a fourth harmonic. Now in terms of what this means with an instrument, <clears throat> this first harmonic tells us that we have one loop in the first harmonic. So we have half of a wavelength. So this is So half a wavelength is the length of one loop. For this one, the same string for the second harmonic, then you have a crest and a trough. So the length is the wavelength. For this one, the length of the string includes one, two wavelengths. So here, the length of the string is two wavelength. Now here I'm using the L for length of string. If it were instead asking you about length of loops, then this would be half of the wavelength. So the length of this loop plus the length of another loop would be the wavelength. This one has four loops in the string. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that you're looking for whether it's asking for the length of the string or length of a loop. So as example, using some numbers, we have a first harmonic. 
And so to make it easier, I'm going to go ahead and just draw it. So first harmonic means we have one loop. So one loop, first harmonic. This string is 0.3 meters long. It's asking for wavelength. So here we have just a crest. So to make a full wavelength, we would also need the trough. And so the wavelength would be this length plus the same length again. So it would be two times the length of the string. And so here, a wavelength would be two times 0.3, which is 0.6 meters. If this instead were a second harmonic problem, so the second harmonic, yeah. So the same 0.3 meters, we now have two loops. So it's a second harmonic. <clears throat> so there, since we have two loops, this would be one full wavelength. And so now, the wavelength would be the same as the string. All right, so it's all about how many loops you have in that particular example. So it depends on the harmonic of the string. So now we're going to talk about wind instruments. And so for wind instruments, these are ones that you need air in order to blow across. So what you should notice is that these are all woodwind instruments. These saxophones, oboes, flute, piccolo, clarinet. These are all tubes. And you can tell that they are tubes because they're open in the middle. The brass family are also just tubes. It just so happens that the tube is wrapped around in coils but it's all still tube-based. So the way that we're going to look at wind instruments compared to strings is instead of a string, we have a tube. So we're going to look again at standing waves. It's these standing waves inside of these objects that are creating these sound waves. And so over here on our loop that we have for a standing wave, we have our two nodes. This is a node. Nodes have no motion, no movement. They stay stationary. And so because of that, these are also ones <clears throat> that will be fixed. So these nodes are in fixed location. This area right here is again called the antinode. Antinode is the area of maximum amplitude, so there is motion. So this area we consider to be open for movement. Now these fixed and open terms are become very important over here with closed tubes and open tubes. Closed tubes are ones where one end is closed, the other end is open. So according to our picture over here, an open area of a tube will have an antinode. This closed area is considered fixed. And so the closed area will have a node. So we have a node at the closed, antinode at the open. So now we need to draw the standing wave. So we go from node up to antinode. And of course, it's reflection, like so. Now, if I were to take another color up here, we can imagine that this part of the loop from node to antinode could potentially extend outward to complete said loop. So what I want you to notice is that in a closed tube situation, right here, we have half a loop. <clears throat> now for open tubes, open tubes are ones that are open on both ends. So this end is open, this end is open. So anytime there is an open end, 
we have an antinode. And then in between, <clears throat> we have a node. So we're going to draw antinode through the node and then to the next antinode. And of course, we'll have its reflection. So again, if I were to complete these, we would have the end here with a node. And this side also with a node. So what I want you to notice is that now we have one, one loop here and one loop here. So we have half a loop, half a loop. So an open tube has a total of one loop. So one loop included within that tube. So closed tubes have half a loop. Open tubes have one full loop. We're going to start by drawing the initial standing wave and its reflection. And so this is going from node to antinode, which is here to here. So our tube is located on this much of that initial standing wave. So the question is, is how much of a wave is this area? So this area is one quarter of the full wave. So one quarter of the wave. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. So then if we were to be given the length of this particular tube, how would we find the full wavelength? So if this is a quarter of the wave, then we need one, two, three, four of these lengths to make one full wave. So the length of a closed tube would need to be four times that length to give you the wavelength created by this tube. Now for open tubes, since we have an antinode here and an antinode here, we're again going to draw the standing wave. And now we're going from antinode to antinode. So from here to here. This is now the tube. And since this is antinode to antinode, which is one loop, right? So half a loop, half a loop, one full loop, it's going to give you half of the wave. Because one full loop is half a wave. Since it's half a wave, to get the wavelength, we need two of them. So this is where you can see the difference between closed tubes and open tubes. Closed tubes are a quarter of the wave, so you need four of them to get the wavelength. Whereas open tubes, since it's half of a wave, you need two of them to get the wavelength. So now why don't we do some examples of closed and open tubes with some numbers. So this is a closed tube. And since it's closed tube, we know that to find the wavelength, it's going to be 4 times the length of the tube. It tells us the length of the tube is 0.3. So it would be 4 times 0.3, which gives us 1.2 meters. So the wavelength in a closed tube of 0.3 meters long will be 1.2 meters. So now, what if we take the exact same tube and we pop open the cap? So now, the wavelength is going to be 2 times the length. So 2 times that 0.3 gives us 0.6 meters. So now, instead of 1.2 meters, it's 0.6 meters. So this is how you can take the exact same tube, have it closed on one end for one sound, open it up to make another sound. They make completely different pitches depending on if they're open or closed. So now, let's do the classic water bottle. So for me, I have to draw these out. 
because if I'm just looking at words, I, I can't figure it out very well. So I'm going to draw, start with a bottle. So this is one of those little teeny ones because it's only 16 centimeters tall, which is 0.16 meters. Now, the way that blowing across a water bottle or a milk jug or anything like that works is it's the air inside here that is vibrating. So the amount of air determines the frequency that you hear. The first thing we have to do, since we have the length of the bottle, is we need to find the wavelength of that sound wave. Since the bottle is closed at the bottom, this is considered a closed tube. So wavelength is going to be 4 times the length. So wavelength is going to be 4 times that height of the bottle, which is 0.16, and so we get 0.64 meters for our wavelength. Now that's not what we're asked for. We're asked for frequency. One number that needs to be given is the speed of sound in the air. If it's not given to you, the speed of sound should be 340 meters per second, and that's for air. So the next step here is we have the speed of 340 meters per second. We have the wavelength of 0 0.64 meters. And so we're looking for frequency. Question is, how do we find it? Well, from the waves unit, we have an equation for that. V equals lambda f. So 340 equals 0.64 times f. We divide on both sides. And so we get a frequency of 531 hertz. So that would be the frequency that you would hear. Now, since this is not usually how you play these bottles, they usually have some water in it. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to put some water. So we're going to have the same bottle. The same bottle is still the same height, 0.16 meters, but now it has some water in it. The water, since it's 6 centimeters, is the same as 0 0.06 meters. So the question here is, since the air is what creates the sound wave, what is our height now? Well, we have the height of the bottle, which is 0.16, but we also removed 0 0.06 meters of that height of air. So the height of the air, or the length of this closed tube, will now be 0.1 meters. This is what we're going to use to find the wavelength, which then we'll find the frequency. So it's still closed since there is a bottom to this tube. Now it's just the water level. So lambda is now going to be 4 times the length of air, which is 0.1. So our wavelength is going to be 0.4 meters instead of 0.64. Then we're going to do the exact same thing, V equals lambda f. Speed is still the same because it's still the same air, but our wavelength is now different, which is 0.4. So we're going to divide by 0.4, and so we will get a frequency of 850 hertz. So as you can see, as you add the water in, so without water we had 531, with the water, we had 850. So as you add more and more water, the frequency is going to get higher and higher. As you reduce the amount of water, the frequency is going to get lower.